music was started by my parents in June of 1950. My father was a well-known music educator and conductor. Many years ago, there was a music store, I believe in Pennsylvania, that had collected musical instruments from all over the world. And we started our collection by the purchase of that collection. That's how we acquired our instruments. What do I think of the current state of the music industry? Um, I think we are still trying to find a balance. I'm extremely biased because I'm a classicist, so I feel like the old ways are the best ways, and if it isn't broke, you don't need to fix it. So, <laughs> um, But there have been a lot of advances in musical technology that some are good, some aren't so great. For example, auto-tune, I just... I can't stand that, <laughs> but um, I think we're still trying to achieve our balance. There was no place that you could get classical musical scores where they knew what they were doing <laughs> anywhere in the Washington area. Well, the sheet music business has been a tough business since the invention of the Xerox machine. And then it got even tougher when um, the internet came into being because there's a lot of free music out there and, um, and what isn't free, um, people can sit at their desk and order it without ever going into a store and seeing the different editions, feeling the paper that they're printed on or knowing anything much about it more than a title and an author or composer. The oldest actually string instrument that we have right now, um, well, here is going to be this Guadagnini um, violin. It was made in 1852 in Torino, Italy. Um, it's really beautifully weathered wood. Um, we put a few new strings on it, but it still just sounds just as good as it probably did back then. This 15 and a half inch viola um, made by, looks like, Silvestre. Um, it, also, it also was made, it was made in France actually, in Lyon. And this one is $12,000. So. This is Lucky, and my brother is Richard Marcello. He's a very successful musician in Los Angeles. And when he was 10, 11, 12, 1963, when the Beatles were kind of just hitting, he took guitar lessons here and had a great teacher, and he still remembers it. Good music is good music, and bad music is bad music. My name is Philip Taylor and I'm um, one of the guitar instructors here at Dale. Uh, I've been doing this for, tell my age, I've been doing it pr probably about 30 years or more. Um, started when I was about, started late, about maybe like 18. And uh, I played in numerous bands. Uh, I was in a band that had a record deal. I, I like, I love the guitar, but I really wanted to be a drummer. And uh, I think everybody's a drummer. Um, your heart has a beat, your life has a beat. So, so the drums probably is is the uh, is the instrument that really is it's it's like the heartbeat of the whole thing. And I think everybody's a drummer, whether you realize it or not. If you're a good musician, you're a drummer. Is there any creativity left in the music industry? I think there is. Um, well, at least in the community that we mostly deal with, um, which is the DC jazz community, which is very small but extremely tight knit and like pretty much like a family. Um, we get a lot of people that know each other's names coming in. Um, you get so many really fantastic stories and just so many really vibrant characters in the DC jazz um, community that um, I can't, there is no doubt that there is cre creativity in it.